to your bilingual space connected. My name is Fabiana Espinosa and I am connected with you from Santa Cruz, Bolivia in South America. I am honored to share this time with all of you and I am also excited to connect with friends from all over the world. Friends that have something interesting to share with us, something to teach us and why not to inspire us with. I always remind you that you can not only see us through the Abbe Ayala channel, but also you can follow us through Facebook, Twitter, and after when the show is over on our YouTube channel. I dedicate the show to all the female young entrepreneurs around the world. With the boom of technology and internet, more and more entrepreneurs are now taking their businesses online. And as women today make their presence felt in almost every field, even in the digital space, there are many who have come forward on various opportunities to build new ideas. Over the past few years, there are women who have made name for themselves with their resilience and ingenuity. Today's guest is a superwoman that was able to merge two worlds together, the business real money-making world and the playful world of cosplay. She is a mix of mad skills, selective style and coolness all together. Her name is Alexis Noriega from Arizona, USA. Before we dive into Alexis' experiences, let's meet her. Alexis Noriega is a self-taught costume maker and wings specialist. She started cosplaying in high school and quickly fell in love with creating and designing elaborated costumes. Once she made her first set of wings for a costume, she was hooked. Her work has been showcased in several viral videos in the last few years, and she has been fortunate enough to create wings for fans all over the world through her cosplay business, The Crooked Feather. Alexis has participated as a cosplay guest at several Comic Cons all over the world, both by herself and as part of a local Justice League cosplay group. She hopes to inspire young people to go into the mechanics, engineering and robotic fields with her creative mechanical wings. It is my pleasure today to introduce Alexis Noriega, who is talking to us all the way from Arizona in the US. Alexis, thank you for taking the time to do this with us today. We are a days away from having Comic Con here in Bolivia, so having the interview with, the, with you before is just perfect. Alexis, let's go ahead and dive in your experiences. Tell me. Let's try to go back a little bit, a little bit on time. How was your life before you found your wings? What were your interests, your hobbies, your studies? Um, before I started, uh, I was, I mean, I've always been into art, um, but I've also very much been into science and engineering. And before I started with the wings, um, I actually got my bachelor's degree and then my master's degree in environmental science, which is totally unrelated. <laughs> and uh, this was just a hobby that I did on the side along with my other art projects. And so people got interested in them and then it just exploded. So I quit the old science Alexis and did more art Alexis. Right, and wow, because your work is really, really, really beautiful. And when I see you working, what catches my attention the most is that I see you uh, making holes, and then I see you sewing, and then I see you, you know, cutting metal. It's like, how did you, where did you learn all of this? Well, it's all piecemeal. I think it started when I was really young. Uh, my dad was a fixer whenever, we, there was something in the house that broke, you know, it wasn't that you would just go and buy a new one. 
you would try and fix it first. And so if the sink broke, um, we would try and fix the sink. And so I learned plumbing and then um, we built a lot of the furniture in our house. So I learned a lot of woodworking um, when the lights would needed to be fixed or switched, you know, we um, would uh, fix them ourselves. I learned some basic electrical engineering and how to make the switches work, um, you know, so on and so forth. And honestly, it wasn't vast amounts of knowledge. I couldn't build a house or anything, but it was a lot of little pieces I got to build on when I was older and I, I didn't know how to make something. I thought, oh, I can figure this out. I do know something. I can build on it to figure out how to make it work. As far as as the sewing go, um, uh, and I have been making my costume since I was nine years old. And uh, when I was 10, my uh, Christmas present was my first sewing machine. So I've been making costumes since about then. So it's kind of like in the house with your family, you kind of were preparing for the future without even knowing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Because like, Please tell us about how was your experiences on the making of your first wings? What were you trying to do or which costume were you working on? Um, actually, I wasn't working on a costume in particular. Uh, so I like to just look at tutorials and how things are made. Even if I never plan on making them myself, um, I just like watching people make stuff. And so I saw someone who made a very pretty set of non-moving wings. They didn't move, but um, they looked very pretty. And they had written up a tutorial on it. And I thought, I didn't have a costume for it, but I didn't care. I've always loved birds. I've had, my first pet was a bird. Um, they're, they're my favorite and I've always been in love with wings and flight. So I, um, I decided, well, I, I don't have a reason I need these, but I need them for reasons. Uh, and I made them anyway. And when I made them based on the tutorial, there were just some things, a lot of people when they make things the first time, it's not perfect. Um, and that's fine, that's how you learn. But this tutorial was kind of based on this person's first time they made something. And I made it the way they made it. And I went, you know, this isn't quite good enough. I don't like, you know, I don't like how bouncy they are. And I don't like how the quills have those pokey ends sticking out. I want to cut those off and, you know, so on. I don't like this type of feather that they use. I'm going to use this one. And, and I made a second and then a third and then a fourth pair. Just never quite satisfied. You know, there's always a way to make something better. And that's not to say that the first thing that you make isn't impressive and amazing. But, you know, it's, you know, not the first one you make is never going to be perfect. So um, I just kept kept going. <laughs> So that first one, um, I think I, I, I made it into like a death costume. I was like an angel of death and that was my, it didn't, it wasn't anything in particular. I just wanted to wear them and be pretty. <laughs> of course. And that, so you are, you self-taught. You, it's not like you went to classes, you went to, I don't know, school, college or anything. You just, because nowadays we see and we see a lot of tutorials, as you said, that you can take a look, but actually giving the next step and actually improving what you learn, right? Because you kind of got yeah. a little bit of the skills, you learn it how, but you, ha you had your own eye and your own way to do things. So from that, how and when did you decide to launch the Crooked Feather? How did that develop in your life? What happened there? Well, so when I wore the first pair of wings, I wore them to uh, a comic convention and um, I had a really great reception. Everybody was like, oh, were you in the costume contest? Did you win? All that stuff. And I was like, no none of those things. Um, and I had people coming up to me and asking me if I did commissions and if I would make them a set if they paid me. And at the time um, that I made the first set, I had just graduated and, you know, I didn't want to sell them for a lot, but I thought, you know, why not, um, you know, sell a few on the side just to make a little bit of extra money, you know, fun money. We could go to Disneyland, who knows? And, um, it just kind of snowballed from there. Um, just taking commissions on a one-on-one -on -one basis from people I knew at conventions. And then I just started a little online store and got more and more until the point where in my normal job, 
Um, I was working, you know, 60 hours a week at a normal job. And then I was working an additional 20, 30 hours making wings. And it kind of got right. to be uh, a little too much and I had to pick one. So. Well, you put, you picked the right one, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll find so, out in, um, we'll find out in 20 years. We'll see. I think you are in the perfect path because you know what's so special about your wings? They really look like they they click. They're like a whoever wears them, it looks like it's from it comes from them. You know, because there are several wings that you buy or whatever, maybe some other people make it and sometimes they don't they don't really fit well. And I think that's the beautiful thing on your on your wings because all of the pictures and all of the videos you see how I don't know, the weight and the way they move and everything. It looks just amazing. So let's Thank go you. with the next question. <laughs> yes, I, I am a fan since I saw it. I knew that I really wanted to meet you and have you actually telling, telling me about this experience. Okay, so you decided to make the wings and uh, how was that decision for you in order to decide, okay, I'm gonna leave. How many years did you study for biology and not only uh, bachelor's but also uh, master's? Uh, I was there for seven years. Uh, studying Seven envir years. Yeah, environmental science. And okay. uh, I really, I mean, I loved working in it. It was wonderful. Um, working in the lab was amazing. Working in the field was amazing. Um, and honestly, it wasn't environmental science that was, wasn't really, I, it wasn't that I fell out of love with environmental science. Um, I've even tried to go back a couple of times. Um, but it's it was more the, the the particular job i was in wasn't really utilizing all of my skills and i kind of wanted to upgrade but at that time this was during the recession and so finding another job that fit my skill set was extremely difficult um oh, especially I if i wanted to stay in arizona which i really did my, my specialty is in dry land um, environmental science. So um, looking at arid, arid in water. And the only other places I wanted to move had a lot of water and I didn't know what I would do with myself <laughs> if I went right. there. So, so honestly, like I, I, I just wasn't a good fit in the job that I had and I couldn't find a job that had a good fit. Um, so I had a discussion with my husband and I mean, it was a super hard decision because it was a total gamble as to whether it would work. And honestly, for a year uh, or no, two years, we were, you know, paycheck to paycheck. It was super duper hard, but you know, it was a persistence and a, and a love for what you're doing. And that I think is kind of what pulled us out of that in the end. And, you know, I went from bearing, barely able, being able to pay me to now I think I have nine people working for me. <laughs> Right. So, right. just to try and keep the madness at bay. <laughs> right, but it was a seed that you planted and I think it's giving you the fruits already. Okay, yeah. so tell us about the crooked feather. Tell us when, how long ago did you launch it and uh, how is it going until today? A uh, solid question. I don't, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. I think I launched it officially. Um, in 2013 or 20, end of 2013 was when I did my first little Etsy shop and I had like one thing um, there. <laughs> um, but I did start until I think the end of 2015 was when I made the moving ones. And that's right. when things kind of took off. And you know, between 2013 um, and, and the end of 2013 and the end of 2015, those two years um, were the hardest. Just it was me working constantly for people who you know didn't really appreciate the work they thought oh well why buy your wings for five hundred dollars when i could buy wings from china for 35 and the answer is i don't work in a sweatshop in china so um right. and mine are prettier thank you um definitely but another thing so before you started making like the wings and then later on, you came out with the mechanical wings. Is that yeah. how it happened? Oh, I see. Yeah, well, so what happened was I, 
was making the non-moving ones and I had put out some prototypes that I had made myself with like, they were made with like wood and dowels and they were just me trying to figure out a way to do it. And when I, I finally figured something close out, I had somebody contact me because they were a pulley system. So you would pull on a cord and they would open. Um, right. And I finally had somebody say, hey, like, I really like your wings, but can you make them move automatically? And I said, I know how to, <laughs> but I can't afford to. So if you would like to pay for them, this is how much they're going to cost. Um, and I'll make them, but you got to take a chance because I can't possibly make you anything that'll show you how it's going to work until you pay me to do it because I don't have money like that. And she said, okay, and I love this woman to death that took a chance on me <laughs> because that was the set, the first set that went viral um, because, you know, and they were late by like a month. I barely got them to her on time um, because I was just prototyping and prototyping and prototyping. Right. And uh, so, and those ones were pneumatic, so air pressure. And... Uh, yeah, that, and she just took a chance that I knew what I was doing, and spoiler alert, I didn't, but it worked out. <laughs> and yeah, and they looked amazing because it's exactly what when you're going to wear on an outfit or a costume. I mean, it changes it changes the game completely when you have amazing wings and they look awesome. Of well, course, she and. I think that one of the things that when I'm talking with people that work in theater or film, um, when it comes to like doing like CG, where it's just a graphic that they put on afterwards versus the actor or the person actually wearing them, you actually physically do have a set of wings on your back when you're wearing these. And so when they open, you can feel your weight change, like your center of gravity changes when you wear them, like you have to hold your posture different and all of these things that you don't really feel or understand until you have them on you. And I think that that's right. part of it. Definitely. Okay, so that's another one part of the of what you do that I loved. And I really, really think you have an amazing talent. It's that your wings and everything. But then on the other hand, you also share online tutorials about making your wings. And I think that's also another thing that is amazing because back in the day, not even too long ago, before YouTube and everything, whoever knew to do something, you know, it was like, oh, make it a secret. Don't say it, don't tell anybody where you get your materials. Don't share it, don't, don't show it. You know, do it behind the walls and it's a secret. But yeah. nowadays that has changed and you, and I even saw you kind of like commenting or resp responding to some messages. Oh, you can make your own, check my tutorials. That is so cool. I think it's amazing. So please tell us, how does that work for you? What's the relationship you build or what happens with uh, your followers? So the reason I did that instead of, because you can, you can hoard it to yourself um, and say, oh, I'm, I'm patenting this, like nobody else can touch it, it's mine, no one can have it. But as a costumer and a cosplayer, one of the things when you compete, you have to make it yourself. If you buy it from somebody, um, it disqualifies you from a lot of competitions. And so when I would see something really awesome online that somebody was selling, I was like, oh, I know how to do everything else, but how did you make this part so that I can incorporate that into the thing I'm just gonna wear? I'm not gonna sell it, I just wanna wear it. And you know, it's a trade secret. And unfortunately that means a lot of cosplayers people that just want to make it for themselves are disqualified from doing that and they have to try and figure something else out and it's not going to look as good and that's just not fair to me so um and then the other thing too is if i tried to patent it i have to prove that i'm the one that came up with the idea of moving wings and i'm very much not um there's plenty of people that have made them before me in different ways with different materials but but i'm not the first by any means um so right. i think i think that it, it would be unfair for me to say, haha, it's mine also. And so what I decided to do instead was say, okay, listen, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna patent it, I'm not gonna do any of this, but please, uh, if you want tutorials and you want my help, I'm happy to do it. 
but just go on my Patreon um, and, you know, give me $2 a month per person and help me out so that I can make new, more tutorials. And then I'll help you out by telling you how I did it. And right. that's kind of how we have that back and forth. So anybody who's on my Patreon, they get not only they get the tutorials early, but then they also get to talk to me directly and get help with their projects. And so that way, everybody in the community gets to help out each other. Another nice thing about it, too, is internationally, I have a lot of fans um, in South and Central America. I have a lot of fans in Australia, New Zealand, Europe, um, Japan, and the materials are different. I mean, aluminum is the same everywhere, but the glue I use, for example, you can't get apparently, I didn't know this, you can't get it in Canada, you can't get it in Mexico, you can't get it in South America, you can't get it in Europe. And so what everybody does is say, hey, I found this material that works really well in Canada. It's this stuff. And then everybody on my site also shares what they used and changed to make it better. And so like, we're all right. learning together, we're all improving together and we're all coming up with solutions to problems together. And it's really great. And I like that right. better. Everybody's having right. fun together. It's, That's so much. And it's back. It's just, it is exactly the, the, the meaning or the definition of community. That's how it should work. And I think that's a great, I think it's treasure when you're actually able, because you have 80,000 followers on your Facebook, on your Instagram. I mean, it's a lot of people. Yeah. And, and, and I'd rather, I'd rather share everything and everybody kind of collab something cool than, than just hoard it for myself. So. I totally agree with you and definitely support your move. Well, we're gonna go to a fast cut now. Stay there, please. And people at home will be right back with more Connected. Stay tuned. Welcome back, Connected people. Thank you for remaining connected. We are still talking with Alexis, who is talking to us all the way from Arizona. Alexis, um, well, we went already through with all of the the actual work, but I want to kind of like, I want to know what's in your mind and in your heart a little bit. How do you feel or how do you see that your work or your art impacts the world in any way? What, what would you say? How do you think you can, you are actually making a difference in, in today's world? Well, I think I think my 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 favorite impact. I don't know if it's the biggest one. Um, I think the biggest one probably is everybody just gets excited and entertained by it. But um, one of the things that really makes me happy is seeing so many little girls and younger women get involved in engineering and science because they see that it's not just about cars and, and equipment and whatever. Like you can use science and engineering and robotics to create something really beautiful and cool and, and fun and artistic outside of like the humdrum normal engineering principles that you hear about in school that are totally boring, except for they're also awesome. But um, <laughs> so, so sometimes I feel like girls feel excluded because they're like, oh, if you, you know, going into engineering means you have to be like into cars and stuff. It's like, no, you can, you can learn about robotics and you can make art. And uh, that's, that's one of the greatest impacts that I like, I like to see. So I, any chance I get, I go to women's hackathons and, and uh, I give speeches and talks at, at any kind of maker fest or hacker fest where I can hopefully um, inspire young women and young girls to, to make their own something, whatever that is. Right. Alexis, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today and sharing all of your experiences and to show us your beautiful work. All the best for you. I'm going to leave you a little space so you can share your information and have people follow you. Uh, hi, my name is Alexis Noriega and I'm from The Crooked Feather and you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube under that name. And then you can also follow me on my website, thecrookedfeather.com. Thank you, Alexis. Mwah. A big kiss until the US. And I hope you continue uh, craving and having more and more and more success. Until next time with me. Bye, thank you. Ciao. As Alexis have told us, 
The most important thing is to always take the time to make your own thing, to find your own thing. What are you good about? What are you good for? What do you know or, or what would you like to learn? Take the time to figure it out and if you have the chance, do it. Even more, if you can not only do it and get good at it, but also make it a business, become an entrepreneur. It's just a beautiful path to continue, a beautiful way to see your life and maybe to construct and to build something or a business that is going to last many, many years. I will see you again the next show. I will come with a new guest and a new topic. I hope to see you there. And remember, if you know somebody that you would like to see here in the show that you think have a beautiful project or a beautiful life or something positive to add to this world, please shoot me an email. My email address is conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. I'll be happy to connect with you. Until then, thank you.